Hi there, it's Chris Coney here. As you may or may not know, I love my diagrams, so when I get an insight about a concept or something, I just really love to make a diagram of it, because that's I'm a very, very visual guy, and I like to communicate in visual ways. So here we go. This one is about like life purpose and how the whole thing about life purpose works, in my opinion, or from my perspective, or according to this insight that I've had. So get this. Point number one. Finding your life purpose is kind of like swimming. And there are all these different lanes. You see, I've, I've just had six of them here. I've numbered them just for illustration purposes. So it's also like um, swimming in the sense that when you start out, and you start out in the shallow part, and then you go deeper as time goes on. So like paddling in the shallow end is fun, but it's not very satisfying. And similarly with life purpose, you know, in life we tend to engage in sort of shallow things, um, and that's just a signal that you know you're you're um, you're still learning to swim in terms of life purpose. <clears throat> then the deeper you go, uh, in terms of the water, the deeper you go in terms of life purpose. So the depth of what you engage in in life. This will make more sense in a second. Um, this red line, this is kind of a path through life, if you like. So I've drawn a bit of a squiggle because that's t typically how we go. And then you see. I'll explain this this lane number six. This is actually um, your life purpose lane, but I'll explain that in a second. Now, uh, this squiggly line, we all have free will, right? And we can choose to swim in any lane that we like. And we can choose to stay in that lane for as long as we want. Um, it's our life at the end of the day. But there is a lane, there is a way of living for each of us individually that is our life purpose, right? So this... Um, this lane here, number six, this is, there is a fast lane, right? This is the, this is different for each of us, and it's like a fast flowing river. And once you're in this lane, which is the correct lane for you, which is the key point, it's the correct lane for you, and this is unique to everyone, uh, you get swept along by the current and you move forward through life with ease, all right? Now, your emotions are indicators, and these let you know whether you're in the correct lane or not. Yeah? Now, kind of like, uh, you know that hot and cold game that you might have played, where if you and I played this game, I would I would hide your phone somewhere, you would you'd turn around, close your eyes, I would hide your phone somewhere in the room, and then, once I'd hidden it, you'd open your eyes and then start searching around. And the only clues I'm allowed to give you are warmer, warmer, or colder, colder. So as you get closer to the item, I say warmer, warmer, and then if you go further away from it, I say colder, colder, ice cold, if you're far away from it. And that's how the game works, and you continue that process until you know, the, the person finds it, right? Similarly with this, so your emotions, positive emotion or negative emotion, are like the hot and cold thing. So what, the stuff you feel good about leads you closer to this lane, and the further away you get, colder you get, the worse you feel, right? But again, there's free will. We always have free will. So we can do anything you like. Yeah? Like I said, there is this lane that <clears throat> once you find it, you will know. So joy is the indicator that you've found the correct lane for you. And that exists here, right? So once you once you stumble upon um, the right lane for you, then you know joy is the emotional indicator that tells you that you've found it, right? <clears throat> now, everyone talks about finding your purpose, right? They all talk about what is my purpose, how can I find, find my purpose, right? Now, if it's to be found, that means it must already be there. Get it? It must already be there. We don't choose to put it there, right? We don't choose what we feel good about. It just kind of happens. I can't decide to love something I don't love, right? I'm not a big fan of angling, for example. You know, I just can't imagine anything more boring than that, personally, right? So I can't make myself feel good about going out on a fishing trip. It's never going to happen, right? So I didn't choose that, yeah? Um, what I feel good about is, like, public speaking, right? I, I didn't choose that. I just feel really good when I'm doing it, right? Um, similarly, someone who absolutely loves angling... They didn't choose that, right? One day they went angling and all of a sudden this rush of positive emotion came and they were like, wow, I really love angling. And by the same token, 
they think about public speaking and they get this dread of emotion. No, that's bad, right? And that's the emotional indicator that that is not for them, right? Get it? All right. So the point there is that if it's to be found, then it must already be there. Yeah, we don't choose our life purpose. It's there, right? Okay. And similarly, we don't choose to feel good or about, bad about something, right? All right. So when you're in any one of the lanes one to five, or any you know anything that's not your life purpose, um, doubt is a regular experience. So we are a victim, or we are a victim of uncertainty. When you're in any one of these five lanes, you we wonder, is the grass greener on the other side? You know, you've had that experience, right? And this is like, is the grass greener in another lane? That's what tends to happen. And this is usually what will cause us to actually venture into one of those other lanes, as you can see here. That you know, is the grass greener over here? No, is the grass greener over here? Is it over here? Grass greener over here? And we tend to go once if you were miles away from your life purpose here this is where you'd feel the worst right which is why in this little example I've gone you know I've rapidly gone back to lane six because you've got some past experiences oh, I'm much, I felt much better here I almost felt like I'd found it here but then I tried some other things thought the grass was greener oh definitely not greener there and then you eventually find your way back um, so that's what usually causes us to venture into the other lanes we might even like I say sometimes swim back into lanes we were previously in, yeah. So like here, you go, oh bloody hell, that feels awful. And even though, like here, uh, say 10, 20 years ago, we were we were in this lane. Later on, we might go, geez, yeah, I felt much better living in this certain place or doing that certain thing, and I feel much worse now. So I'm going back. So you eventually swim back, and you go, oh, there's this memory of you know, I I felt slightly better than I did at this point in my life, and I was doing these things. Perhaps if I delved into that a bit more, I might actually find, you know, the true purpose. Because you here, you knew you were almost there, you kind of felt you were almost there, right? All right. Um, now, doubt and all this is the grass green on the other side thing. This doesn't exist in lane six, right? In this one here, because this is your purpose lane. And there's no doubt exists here. You, you don't feel doubt. Um, there's a knowing in this lane that eliminates all doubt. And the fact that you experience you know, the, the heights of positive emotion here that you don't experience anywhere else is the clear confirmation that lets you know you're in the right lane. And that therefore eliminates all doubt because the, you never question whether the grass is greener anywhere else because for you it can't be. Based on your experience of all the other lanes and how you felt in those lanes, this one just feels so much better that you don't doubt it. You get me? So there we go. That's the little insight I had today, and that's my explanation of it.